I I love Istio. Okay, good. What, good, what good, I do good. is I I like it. I mean, it's it's so light of me. I'm, I'm such a just. I'm okay with spice, but you know, mm -hmm. um, I add pepperoni. I add peppers. It's pretty much a. a, a Damn. Like a All zone. right. It's pretty much a okay. Zone. I like so, that. Yeah. I like that. And then uh, I respect it. I got my my monster in a mason jar because I don't have any cool cups. And then uh, a water chase. Very nice. So. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mason, my name is Colton. Your name. It's is so Mason. good to meet you. Yeah. yeah. So, so I just like I I think the D and D community is is so cool, and mm -hmm. I've been playing since since high school. And I just, I want to meet with people, talk to them about their philosophies, what they think about the game, and just kind of ask some, some funny questions and just get to know people, you know? Because awesome. I'm I, super into it. Awesome. Well, again, my name is Colton. My YouTube channel, which is going up on, if, if that's okay with you, yeah, um, is called WizThrift. It's like a wizard thrift store. You know, we got- Oh, I'm more. already subscribed. Oh, Trust me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and Mason, a little introduction of yourself. Uh, well, I, I'm Mason. I'm the, the DM for Crit Seekers. Um, we're basically just a, a D and D. We started as a D and D podcast, and as of like four weeks ago, we are now a full fledged live stream on Twitch. So nice. yeah, that's awesome. yeah. I haven't had a chance to actually watch your podcast or your Twitch, but. I've I've seen and listened to a lot of the the little snippets from your, from your mm -hmm. episodes, and uh, I, I think they're super cool. There's so many out there too, and like I I think just even like hopefully you've listened to some or, or something. Like I mean, there's so many of them. As long as like you know that supports out there for other people, like that's yeah yeah that's important yeah for sure. So um, this is sponsored by a little company that I'm part of called the Dungeon Forge. And we actually, we make miniatures and stuff. Ooh. And, and we do t-shirts and, and a bunch of other stuff. Right now we're doing a Kickstarter called the, the uh, Tortles of the River Valley. Uh, mm. Tortles are very underrated in D&D. And so oh, for sure. we are, we're doing a Kickstarter and an adventure and stuff. And we just want to share with the world these awesome, slow creatures that, <laughs> that are just really cool. So... Yeah. Very nice. I'll have to check that out when we're done here, honestly. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Okay, so how did you get into role playing games? How old were you? What what got you started? Uh, so this was probably um I wanna say six or seven years ago, actually. Um I was working at a coffee shop. Um I had I'd worked coffee in like the food industry for probably the past ten years. Yeah. Um just various jobs and um at one of the coffee shops i was at our manager and a couple of the employees were like hey we're starting a dungeons and dragons campaign and you know growing up i've always i've been a nerd you know I've, video games i mean I, my friends and i used to be out in the backyard with swords fighting each other I, I'm, but for I, I'm, reason, I'm still out in the backyard with swords yeah, I, I, don't know about I, you, I, I could <laughs> if i could i don't have any like looking around we have an axe on our wall maybe i'll start doing that but uh <laughs> We, uh, Dungeons and Dragons and role-playing games, none of that ever really crossed my path. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just because of the, you know, the friend group I grew up in, like we, we all started on video games really early. And so that kind of took precedence. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, growing up through high school and stuff, I, the friend groups I went through, none of them were ever really super nerdy. I was like the nerdy kid in the group. So I did my own thing. Yeah. Um, and then this interaction they were like do you want to be part of our campaign and the immediate thought that crossed through my mind was like the you know original stereotype of D&D the cheesy one where I'm like no I don't think that's for me um I think I'm good yeah. and they're like all right cool it's fine and, um for the next few weeks they'd come in and just be like telling stories of their their game that they were playing and I was like whoa this sounds really like up my alley this is really interesting and so i finally approached him was like hey can i like do you want to tell me a little bit more about it and the the manager just got in his backpack and pulled out the fifth edition <laughs> player's handbook and handed it to me and was like i'm gonna let you go on break go sit in the office and just just look through it a little bit oh. and you know if it's not interesting that's fine and i mean 
immediately i was like whoa oh. <laughs> and so i asked to sit in on a session and i did and um i was hooked i mean immediately i was like i want to play is it still a possibility and so he walked me through the character creation and i joined their game um and it was one of the the typical you know D D campaigns where we played like pretty consistently for about a year, almost two years, I think it was. And then uh, something happened in the group and it just disintegrated yeah. and sucked because it was my first character and I was getting really hyped about it. Never got to see the completion of his story. I had like talked to the DM about what was going to happen and I'm disappointed that I never got to play it out. But that was kind of my first like introduction and experience with uh, like role playing games, D&D in specific, obviously. Um, and then it just spiraled from there and has turned into, yep. A lot of people, you know, they're like the gateway drug, but D and D is it's just it's the gateway drug, and it's everything else, and you just you just go for it. Yeah. Yeah. No. That, oh yeah. That's that's awesome. That's super cool. Are you still like? And then like, what what got you started being a dungeon master? Like, because you started to play. Um, what was that that gap that that brought you to that? Well, so that was that campaign was the only campaign i played for that couple of years i never had any opportunity to do anything else um i ended up going to another job and someone was started to run a campaign and we played for a couple of weeks and then things got a little weird and so i kind of backed out of that group long story there but um so there was probably a like a year break where i didn't have any tabletop exposure um and i moved in with some close friends and we were all you know living together there were four of us and we were sitting on the couch one day just talking and and one of the guys was in that first campaign i played oh. and so we were telling stories about that and some of the, you know both the other people had in our house had played and so we were telling stories and it of course brought up the like well there's four of us here why aren't we playing and I was like, huh, we should do that. And then, you know, I, I've I've grown up loving storytelling. Um, I love writing. And so I've always kind of been that person to my friends. And so immediately all of them were like, well, why don't you run a campaign? And I was like, well, never thought about it before, but I could give it a go. And I literally went down to my room for two hours and I put together a campaign and came upstairs and we made characters and started playing. Um, and all of those people are slash were part of crit seekers um now so we that would that was the like the like con concept the the conceptualizing of crit seekers as we started this campaign um and then more people started to find out about it some of our other friends like we tell stories and they wanted to be part of it and so a couple months later i had uh six people in the group um excluding me so seven of us mm -hmm. and it kept spiraling and we you know we played um our quote unquote first campaign it kind of it was a short ending because we um spawned the idea of wanting to do a podcast and stuff and i i didn't really like what i had done with that <laughs> story like i've got experience like i want to do something totally different so let's start over um and let's do the like, like I, we want to do a live stream to start out um and so we quit and we spent six months um, making characters. I world built for six months, just putting together this, uh, the world of Kania, which I didn't at the time even think of the fact that there was a level of hell called Kania. So hey, I'm, hey, I mean, it all works now. Is, it played is, into the story. Is everything but, uh, in your world just, it's all hell? Is, is that the I wish. <laughs> no, I had no intention of that. I was just like, I was coming up with names and that popped in my head. And I was like, I like the ring of that. It's yeah. spelled differently. But uh, it ended up having a little story beat that kind of played into that all. Um, but yeah, we, we started uh, playing that second campaign and we were too excited to play. And so we ended up starting it before we actually recorded. I think we played 13 uh, sessions before oh, we started recording. Geez. Yeah, so there was a lot of stuff that happened like before we even started the podcast, but yeah. uh, that was kind of like this this whole campaign here is like pretty much my intro to being a DM, um, which has been weird but rewarding in and of itself. Um, yeah, that's that's super cool. I mean, and like, what what why do you why do you love D and D? Like what, what really draws you into it? Obviously you had some stuff with friends and stuff and you love mm -hmm. storytelling, 
But what about like D&D as, as a group of storytellers do you love? I think with um, D&D and just tabletop gaming in general, um, one of the driving forces that pushed me to even want to do uh, Crit Seekers was that through all my experiences, I started to notice how um, just storytelling at a table with your friends, um, regardless of what the system is or the game that you're playing, has this healing quality to it. Um, I would I would come to the the games like having a bad day. I did, I managed a lot when I was in food, and that was awful. So I'd come to these games just stressed out, and just having that ability to put on a different pair of shoes for a couple hours. And um, oddly enough, um, one of the DMs that first DM I played with um, was really good at working in real world like problems and issues into like a fantastical spin. And it it started to I started to see everybody around the the table having that that different perspective on things and doing the same thing I was and getting to step away from their chaotic lives and just tell this crazy epic story with each other and walking away from it I always felt better and I would always talk about that with everybody you know around me and everyone who I'd spoken to felt the same way and so. That was a big inspiration for me wanting to keep going and one of the biggest things that i take away from tabletop games is just how much of a healing process it can be for people and just that camaraderie to have with i mean even if you have random people at the table i know that there are outliers we've all read the bad stories of people at tables yeah. um and that's with everything but generally it like just what it creates with that group of people, whether it's, you know, a group of new friends who have never met or a group of old friends who've known each other forever, it creates that close-knit, almost family-like feeling with each other because, um, and I'm sure you've, you've experienced this e either yourself or with other people, but when you're telling stories about your campaigns or things that you've been in, people tend to talk about it as like, we did this, we went and did, this. they're not like, well, my character, you know, in the game, this happened. It's like, we went and did this. And so that's always been so cool to me that people can have that shared experience with each other. And it feels so real to them, even though you're literally just <laughs> sitting there with a pencil and paper and like, yeah. just it's the, you know, science or the theater of the mind. Yeah. Yeah, and no, that that's honestly that's just a beautiful statement. I'm just feeling chills because like it's I know <laughs> I know that feeling so well. I, yeah, I've I remember back back in back in high school when I started just role playing games. I've always enjoyed acting ever since elementary school, but mm -hmm. I and my mom she when I was younger she was like you guys can never play D and D because <laughs> it's a demon thing. Like like yep. there, there was the D and D movie on like on Disney Channel or whatever. And, and she's like, you guys never play it. Like, that's bad stuff. And to this day, she denies that she said that. I'm like, no, I, I remember that. No, you did. So, I yes. remember. But uh, I just remember there was this small group of friends that I started playing with. And I actually got started on Call of Cthulhu. Um, oh, which, okay. Which is a, that's cool. Yeah, it's super cool. World of Darkness, Call of Cthulhu, these games that are super brutal mm -hmm. because you're, actual, you're just actual humans. I go yeah. up against these eldritch horrors and werewolves and vampires and those games are so much more focused on the role-playing part because you can't there's no way to min max a human being you know? oh yeah <laughs> and so like i just yeah ever since then i i was obsessed with the storytelling part and i think going off that do you have like a favorite memory i mean for the past six to seven years it's probably hard to think of a favorite <laughs> memory but what's what comes to mind when when you think of like oh this is this is D D. Um well can I give two, one being as a player and one being as a DM because two of them pop to my head. No, I'll be no, quick. You, no, 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 just kidding. Please. Say, no, say. just one. <laughs> um as a player, um one of the, the biggest moments that I, I think about often still and I remember it in such vivid detail is that first campaign I was ever playing in. Um one of the members of our, our game now, Russell, at the table, he's a really good friend of mine. He he was one of the ones that kind of brought me into playing that. And so he played this character that was basically a monk, a shadow monk that uh, was a wuss. <laughs> and we didn't know why. He always, like, combat would happen and he'd look for shadows and, like, to hide immediately. Like, he would help. He wasn't, like, that player that was like, I'm, real, I'm not going to do anything. But, like, we were always... Do. 
Yeah, we were always really weirded out by it because we're like, why do you always hide at the beginning? And he'd just play it really close to the chest. Um, and one of the games, our, our DM uh, had just been playing Bloodborne. And so he started, he played this like vampire, like horror esque um, arc that we did. And we ended up facing a vampire lord at the end of it. It was really cool. Um, the fight was awesome. I, I, I don't remember the fight. But it was what happened afterwards. We we ended the fight. We all felt victorious. It was that like, yeah, we did it. That was such a fun arc. Like, thanks for that. And then he starts to describe how the sky begins to split open and these airships start pouring in to like we're in in this this mansion basically. And we based on the fight had blown the side of this the walls off so we could see up into the sky. Yeah. And these airships start coming in and they start firing like grappling hook like uh zip lines down into the building and i remember looking at russell and his eyes just start to go wide and i was like what is happening right now and these uh individuals start to zip line down towards us and they're dressed the same as his character and the dm starts to describe how his father and these other individuals who look exactly like him, like clones, are ziplining towards us. And he lost his shit. Like it was <laughs> and I remember that moment because that was that was one of the moments that made me go, like, you can have such a visceral connection to your characters. And just watching him fidget and get so uncomfortable at the table with us, just based on like this happening. And it started this whole arc with us having to face, you know, his his father and the fact that his father had like cloned himself and he was a clone of his father, but like rejected everything. And it was yeah. it was this really cool. Russell's really good at like deep storytelling and he's got with his character now, everybody thinks they have a lot of things pegged and they're wrong and it's great. What's, um, what's, his, he's, what's, his, what's his current character? So he plays a Kanku Ranger okay. um, that was just recently revealed um, that he wasn't always a Kanku. Throughout the campaign, he always says, like, I've been 14 years a Kanku is always, like, the joke. Um, but it was basically just recently revealed that he was once um, one of the embodiments of um, sin on the, the plane. So he was the embodiment of greed and had six other siblings that embodied the others and um, mother, as they call her, who was like the one that they were gifted these um, embodiments off of, essentially. And um, so they've been having run-ins with the other siblings and all this has kind of been coming up and they're like, oh, we, we have it all figured out. We know everything that's going on. And we're like, <laughs> nope, nope. So I'll leave it at that if anybody okay. ends up watching. Okay. That's that's kind of uh that's been revealed recently enough that yeah. you know, hopefully it's a tempt for people to come and check it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, that, that right there's uh, a super cool storyline. Like I'm I'm hooked. So it's fun. He and he he like he'll send me pages of backstory stuff and I'm like, this is great. Thank you. <laughs> I, I know a lot there's that there's that those horror stories of like in the memes about people sending novels and stuff. I love it when my players oh, send me a ton of stuff because I just I love just putting everything into the game. I love hinting yeah. at things and I love just taking what they have and twisting it because when they give it to me, mm -hmm. it's mine. It, it's mine now. Like you have yeah. given me the ability to to do that stuff. So. Cool. And being able to take something they created and like give it back to them in a sense, but like still surprise them is my favorite thing in the world. Uh, all of them have done that to me. Everybody at the table I've gotten, I have documents from each of them of backstory, and it's it's amazing. I love my my players; they're so great. But uh, the DM experience that uh, is my favorite would be um, when we. It was one of our original episodes, so we had a weird thing with the podcast. We did like 34 episodes, and then like re launched ourselves because all of those episodes were like four hours long because we were going for like critical role um template basically but we were a podcast so we didn't have any visual and it just wasn't really attracting people yeah. so we like relaunched did shorter episodes split everything but one of them um as a dm and if have you you've dm before yeah oh yeah i've, I've been DMing. yeah yeah i've played since i was in high school but i've been dming like pretty consistently are you a forever life. dm as well by choice by choice yeah okay i mean same i get it yeah yeah, yeah. um but yeah for the past like three or four years i've been being 
being a dungeon master pretty okay. pretty seriously. So hopefully you've had this moment where um, you know you you get everybody's backstories, you put all these things together. Um, I I tied every player because at that point in time we had nine people wow. at the table, including myself. I can't say no um, <laughs> when I had we had so many people wanting to play and so like beginning of the podcast there were nine of us mm -hmm. and i had um woven all nine of their backstories together in some way shape or form and they had no idea and this was 19 episodes in um i i had a really big um individual from someone's backstory show up and basically give them a scare mm -hmm. like show up and show that she'd been watching them and following them for some time and it was one of those moments where like I revealed that to that person and then someone else at the table was like, wait, but she did this to me. And then someone else was like, no, she she was part of this in my backstory. And we have like a, a picture from that night where everybody's sitting across the table doing like finger pointing meme at each yeah, other yeah, because yeah. It, just, it spawned this conversation. And as a DM, it, it was my favorite moment because i sat there for two hours while they just role played with each other and said not a word yeah. <laughs> like yeah. and it was amazing and that those moments as a dm are just so rewarding when this thing that you've been toying with in your head sparks something like that happening at the table so that would be those are my two moments uh, my two memories I, man i i love i love that so much when and when your players can give you that stuff and you, you just play with it, it's just, it's it's something else. Like, I think mm -hmm. the reason why I love D&D so much is because it's such a free r range of, of everything, you know? Yeah. You can have, you know, super low magic system, super high fantasy, magitech, everything, and, and just everything you can do with each character, you know? And mm -hmm. it's just... I, I love it. It's it's amazing. I agree. That's that is so cool. Dang. So the one that uh, yeah. I was just gonna say it allow it allows that um, freedom of imagination, which I feel is is really lacking in like a lot of societal norms nowadays. And I I love that aspect of it. That I mean, you can literally think of anything. Yep. And, and I mean, it doesn't mean it's always possible. You know, as a DM, we both know that some things just aren't possible. Yeah, 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 but it's yeah. cool that they, you know, you can have that um, thought process. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, they're like, yeah, so many movies, like it's been going on for the past like 10 years or so. Like there's so many remake, remakes of just everything. Mm -hmm. And there's very rarely that do you get something that's that's new and fresh. And yeah. so I think that's one reason why D&D &D and just role-playing games – have become so much more popular in the past five to six years. Obviously, that's because fifth edition is so accessible, but also because yeah. people realize, oh, I can I can do this. Like I can do whatever I want, and it's a time where you can just have fun with friends. And yeah, yeah, that's so cool. And so, I mean, going off that, where do you get your inspiration? I I, I was listening to one of your little snippets, and there is the uh, the mic and uh, mic and it melt where yeah. the players kind of had an outer body experience. He was sharing the consciousness with the Mykonids. And I listened, I was like, that is so cool. And <laughs> the, the, the way you were weaving you. your words together was just so well done. And like, so where do you get all this inspiration from? Like, um, A lot of it stems from just media that I'm consuming at the moment. Okay. I, well, I say, I, I say a lot, but... Um, I, I have a problem with giving myself credit and I'm called out of on it a lot. So I'm trying to be better with it. So I will say that a lot of it is just me. I, I mean, I, I, uh, I sit around a lot during the week and like just, um, conceptualize what I want to go for the session. Um, and I try to play off of the players a lot, especially because they're my close friends, you know, knowing them really well is a benefit to the sense that I can, I kind of know what, they're going for with their characters and and what might be interesting to them and that character um was played by a good friend ben of ours who he actually left the table at the beginning of our relaunch of the podcast there's an episode that we do towards the beginning that is like his goodbye episode he moved away we were sad um but his character dewitt is a kind of a rastafarian bard 
I've, who I've, I've listened yeah. to some of his stuff. Yeah, yeah. I miss I miss having him at the table because most of that stuff on Instagram are his amazing songs that he would put together, and I miss that so much. But his character um, was his backstory was he was kind of in search of this <laughs> magical herb to heal his tribe. Um, leave it to. <laughs> My, my friends to do this to our podcast oh, campaign but man. i let him roll with it because he put thought into it it wasn't like a stupid unthought out like yeah. he wants to go find this magical herb and there was like reasoning and a lot of detail behind it yeah. but that was the premise uh-huh. um and so i wanted to kind of play with that with his character um and so he'd been looking for answers on where to find this for like the whole campaign and i just when I when I put that, um, I didn't even know if they were going to go to the Mike and village. I, you know, at the beginning of that session, they were running away from a purple worm, trying not to uh, disturb it. And I brought up that, you know, they witnessed these Mike and Mid, um, creatures pulling some of the bodies away that had been, you know, taken. And so they followed them. And I was like, okay, I really hope they do this. And um, so I kind of put that there to be an experience for his character because it's something that his character would have related to because it was almost like a healing medicinal experience in itself where I, I kind of introduced the the um, elder of the Mykonid village who, you know, they don't normally like invite individuals into this experience, but with his character and his character's attitude and energy, it was like something that he the, the elder was like, I think that we have some things that we can show you. And so I, I kind of played off of that and just, um, you know, looked into a lot of just, um, actually the inspiration for that was a lot of like hallucinogenic experiences, because to me, that was what, you know, when you look at the mic and the descriptions, they talk about like these spores when they are ingested by individuals, they're, they're hallucinatory spores. And so I kind of wanted to play off of that and be like, well, when they have this hive mind, this experience that they do as a ceremony with each other, it's got to be something similar to that because they're basically these beings that are, you know, um, fungi, these mushrooms that, and so I, I played off of that and just kind of, that's where that came from was, was wanting to kind of, um, go off of his characters, uh, what they were kind of wanting to experience and, and give that to him. And so that was really fun. I I really liked. I listened to that one a lot because I like. I'll listen to him be like, "Wow, I, I really like what I did there." <laughs> I, I really feel like I'm really feeling something right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel tingly. <laughs> I, no, that's that's super cool. Yeah, and that just goes back to the whole thing of knowing your players. And mm-hmm. and I think like for me, one of my struggles as a DM is like, oh man, I I love my story. I love I love creating these things. But one thing I've I recently like really tried hard to to turn towards is it's it's for the players you know yes, yeah. yes we need to have fun where we are actually players at the table as well mm-hmm. but as dungeon masters i feel like it's our responsibility to to make it for the players they're the protagonists yeah. they're they're the heroes and so yeah no i, I think that's that's really cool and, and from what i've seen from what you're talking about it sounds like you're really good at that at making your players Thank the, you. the stars and making them feel really important and fun. I try and I know that and I maybe I'm hard on myself on this. I know sometimes they might not feel it and I like what there's some stuff going on right now with one of the players where I, I put something in play and didn't know if they were gonna interact with it and they did. Um, and it's causing some adverse negative things to one of the players. Um, and after every session, I you know try to check in if something serious happens. I'm always like, hey, you know, did you have fun? Was this, you know, are you? I, and I always try to be like, just know that like what I have planned will be worth it in the end. Just like be patient. Um, this is more for your characters, like growth and development. So just like you know, don't get frustrated with it. And they never do. But I'm, I just, I'm always anxious that I'm gonna do something that'll make them not have fun. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I, th- I think there's probably been a couple times where we had one episode um, that uh, they tried to do a heist. It didn't go well. <laughs> Just and the, they the, were the phrase they tried to do a heist. <laughs> that that right there, that's yeah. that's a D and D t-shirt right there. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> didn't go well. Um, 
two of the play they split the party two of the players went in the rest of them stayed and these two players were captured um and i like they got taken to the underdark and there was kind of this dark storyline playing out down there and uh i really wanted to make them understand that they had messed up mm -hmm. um and and make it feel like what you know set the tone for what was going on down there and so i did all this research on like medieval torture and cool. stuff and uh we played a session and i had to put a disclaimer at the beginning of this episode because i guess i, I like i had to put myself in that mindset and so i got carried away and it got pretty rough yeah. um with the torture and you know one of the players after the session was had a really hard time listening to what had happened i mean it wasn't like you know it was just kind of gross like yeah, really yeah. you know like brutal stuff yeah. that uh i got too detailed on okay. yeah. um and so that was one of the moments that uh you know we had to sit down and she, she ended up being fine and was like i i i respect and i i agree with the way that you took it because it set the tone for what happened it just was really hard in the moment to listen to but it wasn't my character that it was happening to and so that might have been what was hard and so i know that there's been times where i've like the story has taken over in my mind and not the player experience and i mm -hmm. think those lessons that, that situations have given me the lessons to not uh you know to at least be conscious of those issues when i'm running the session yeah I think as as dungeon masters, it's like we feel like we have to be perfect, you know. Mm -hmm. We feel like we have to. If it, if something goes wrong, it's our fault. Like only in in all my time as a as a dungeon master or as a game master, only one of my players has died. And when it happened, I was yeah, I was I was super sad, and like the whole like the whole vibe of the table just kind of died, and everyone was just mm -hmm. like super serious and like. Because and these players, they, they were all pretty new, except for one of my friends. And so mm -hmm. they, I think it hit them like, oh, geez, like, we can die. Like, th this, <laughs> this can awful. happen. <laughs> geez. Yeah. And, and, but like, they kind of, I, and then I just felt really bad. And I went home and I was like, man, I suck. But then after thinking about it for a couple days, like between the sessions, I was like, wait a second. They put themselves in that situation. Like, I, I warned them many times. But, mm -hmm. yeah so that's yeah it's i i criticize myself after every session i don't know if that's ever gonna go away i don't know if that's just something that sticks around for dms it's just you know mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i think it's i think it's just part of being human and just sharing your art and your 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 baby because like oh god it's so anxiety inducing <laughs> <laughs> like oh i was looking at your map of the continent of Feld, feldspire yeah. really cool name by the way I, I i love names and just like cool words put together um mm -hmm. you know sharing taking a piece of yourself which which being being a dungeon master is being a player is you're creating yeah. something and you're giving it to other people to to work off of mm -hmm. it's nerve-wracking it is terrifying and i i think every dungeon master gets nervous even just for a shopping episode or you know yeah. whatever it is like just interactions with this this little dumb npc that my players love for some reason uh, <laughs> and i have to keep doing that silly voice uh, <laughs> yep but yeah well actually that was my next question is how did you get inspiration for this continent of feldspire because the the continent it's it's so interesting like the way it's laid out is there a special reason why it's laid out that way or just were you doodling like how did that come to be so i i made the map using a program called wonder draft um okay. if you okay i was hoping you'd heard of it um I, if anybody I, hasn't and is watching this if you're making maps like i will i will tout that program till my grave because they are amazing yeah um but i i had been following the guy who made it on twitter for it because he had just posted like a, a gif of like like oh this is what i do at home to make my maps and people lost their shit over it yeah. we're like that's really cool like what it, how, can you can you make this and give it to us oh. and we basically turned it into wonder draft and so i was one of the first like to buy it and was really excited nice. to do it um but there was some planning behind it um i i had wanted for a while 
So the little the little uh, arm out to the left is known as the Altean Confederation, and I wanted there to be like an intro area in a sense for okay. these guys. It was like this part of the map is like it's where we're gonna start, and so you're free to go wherever you want here. But this is like you know throughout their travels there, they were always they always heard rumblings that like crossing into the greater part, which is known as the wilds. Um, is dangerous. Not a lot of people do it. All the cities out there kind of fend for themselves. Um, it's very Wild West feeling. Um, and that was kind of the inspiration behind wanting to design it that way. Um, the shaping of it came just from Wonder Draft. I was just, I, I think I made like 20 separate um, just rough drafts of different maps. And then was, I looked at all of them and just I had like the idea for some of the cities and things I wanted to do and I just kind of I ended up settling on that one so I was like, this fits what I want to do and kind of has the aesthetic for the travel and just like pacing that I want to go at um, and it allowed me to kind of split the continent into like three well technically four areas in my mind it was like the starter area and then the greater parts known as the wilds but you've got like the north of feldspire which is a little bit more ac accessible and a little bit more um populated and developed and then the witherwood which is the giant forest in the middle is like the mythical fantastical forest it's like only high level adventuring bands go into there because it's full of scary shit and then the south is like the, the really wild west feeling because it's really developed by like either people who have sailed up there and established cities or people who have trekked through you know the witherwood and made their way down there and so i wanted to i wanted a continent that i could establish these like areas so that there was almost like a little bit of a a level cap feel to it without having a cap like if they wanted to go to the south by all means they can yeah. i just uh don't know if they would survive for very long <laughs> Um, yeah. it's always been established, but I, yeah, thank you for the comp. I, I love it, but I always, I, I feel like there's still that part of me that looks at the map and judges it, judges it and being like, I could have done better here, but yeah. No, I, I looked at it. I'm like, that is really cool. I need to ask him about that because I, <laughs> I am such a sucker for maps. I can't draw people. I can't draw like buildings or places, but I, I love maps. I, I just spent not as much recently I'm, I'm i'm pretty busy these days but there was a time where i was just spending hours just just drawing maps and that's awesome and like my, my next question is is names like the altain confederation is that what you called it yeah how and then feldspire how do you come up with your names because for me uh, that's, that's my biggest thing is like if i have a name to something it's 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 good it's good for sure i a lot of it is just sitting there for hours for <laughs> one day some of it i i do use name generators every once in a while. if i get stumped and i'm like i just need a name i'll use name generators for inspiration mm -hmm. i don't usually end up picking something like straight from a name generator unless i'm in a hurry and it's something not important yeah. um a couple of the cities were did come from a name generator because i saw the name and i was like i love that that fits perfectly with what i want to do but a lot of those were just um me just just coming up with something on the spot yeah. um one of the cities uh to the north west is uh it Farsalis. that was that was all created by one of the players that's her hometown she made everything including the name um so i can't take credit for that one yeah, yeah. but uh everything else was just kind of like coming up with things putting words together being like this is yeah i love names too so i you know i i always want the right name and i don't want it to sound either unimportant or stupid or just not uh yeah not have the impact that i want it to yeah well like it's funny what you said about like not wanting names to feel stupid i think the the one like ultimate like this is this sucks is when in critical role the uh Hervon, the, the champion of the Raven <laughs> Queen. Uh, <laughs> that's just like, oh man. E even Matthew Mercer is uh, is subject to Oh, I'm guilty. <laughs> I'm so guilty of it. The first session of our campaign, I had them watching a play. It was kind of part of the like intro. They were watching a performance. And uh, it was about this hero named Valley, who was a big inspiration to one of the players. So I kind of wanted to put that in the play. Yeah. And like his... his um, his relationship with this woman 
um, during the, the great war that happened in the, the history of the, the world. And I just forgot to develop names because I'm, I was trying, I was so focused on the first session. And so of course yeah, yeah. there, I was like his love with this woman and like, what's her name? And I just said, Valerie. And so it's <laughs> Valley and Valerie. And I don't, I still to this day get shit about that. It never ends. And I like coming up with names on the spot. I'm so bad. Like they met these two farm boys and I was like, oh, it's Trevor and Chris. And they're like, Trevor and Chris as a fantasy name. Are you kidding okay. me? <laughs> Trevor, Trevor, I'll give to you. But Chris, yeah, that one, that was I know, I about. know. Ugh. I'm bad at all. But like at the, in the moment, I've got to have two hours to think of a character name. That's, yeah. That's what I need. Yeah. No, no, I, yeah, I, when you said sitting there for hours, I, I'm there. Luckily, mm -hmm. I have a job where I'm, I'm, I'm a courier for FedEx. And so I'm able to just drive right. and, and just think of stuff and, and just come up with That's so nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty great. I, I, I like my job. Yeah. Okay. So what is your favorite D&D monster? Ooh. That's so hard. And then my next, Why would you? And then, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I when I wrote these questions, I'm like, huh. Nah, it's okay. I'll, I'll just I'll let it happen. Oh, or what? What I say? And it can't be dra It can't okay. be dragons because that's that's just that's, okay. that's, too, that's fair. too easy. It's um, not. It's not. I do. I do love dragons because they can be so versatile. But that's not. Um, it's still a a very you know D, D staple but i i really really like mind flares um and just the whole story behind them because it has that like infusion of um like cthulhu and like that like the eldritch yeah. i love that about them um which is i'm super into baldur's gate right now and that's part of the reason that i'm like this is great i love this right now. but uh I haven't used them in this campaign. I don't know if I'm going to. There, I had a, I did a thing with it in our first campaign. I, my, our first campaign was a lot of me pulling inspiration from other things. So I did like a Critical Role campaign one with uh, the uh, what's his name that mind flare that they come across oh, who's separated. Clar Clarota. From... Clarota, yeah, I did that um, just because <laughs> I wanted to see what they would do. Yeah, I switched up yeah. the situation a little bit, yeah. but. Uh, um, I, I wanted to take a break from Mind Flares because of that one, because they started to get really like knowledgeable about that stuff. And I was like, I want to wait until you forget, and then I can throw this stuff at you, and you won't yeah. understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. So, but I think they're probably one of my favorite monsters to to mess around with. Yeah, and yeah, Mind Flares are pretty cool. They're really scary. Mm -hmm. um, just the, just like the idea of they their tentacles on your head and they just suck out your brains like right I, I i really want a really dumb player where the mind flare tries to suck their brain but like there's nothing there <laughs> no intelligence <laughs> yeah yeah An intellect devour yeah. that just can't devour uh, anything the, the yeah. intellect devour actually starves and <laughs> and that's that would, and that's that would how be fun. they save the world that would be fun <laughs> yeah that would be fun that's awesome. what's your favorite oh man Oh, I was hoping you wouldn't ask me these questions. It's, ah, it's, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Oh man. Um, I I would say goblins, because they're just so classic. But at this point, yeah. I don't see goblins as really monsters anymore, because they're they're so they're so common in play, and they're they're just a really common monster. Mm -hmm. I think. I really love, I think my players are probably my favorite monster. Be <laughs> I, like, I like that answer a lot. Uh, because <laughs> I, mean, it, I would have said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you think about it, the, the players are actually the true monsters of D&D. Even if they're good people, they still kill and murder and steal. Um, yeah. But yeah, no. Um, Beholders are cool. Oh yeah. Um, I think angels, honestly. I don't. There's not. Angels there's there's not enough. Yeah. There's not enough celestials in D and D. No, sorry. Mm. Kotals. Have you have you seen Kotals? I have. I haven't had a reason to use them yet, yeah. but I want to. Yeah. I, I want I, to. I think Kotals are probably my favorite because celestials are really cool. Um, 
I just like the whole idea of these lawful creatures that are willing to to kill you because you're you're breaking the law. But also yeah. just like the idea of these large snakes with wings <laughs> and stuff. I, I just think they're awesome. Oh yeah. Anything with tele- I'll find a reason one day. Yeah. Anything with telepathy that can communicate with your players in their mind to mess with the other players. Oh, it's so fun. It's it's fun. It's fun. Love messing with players. Yeah. <laughs> What what what's your favorite class? Um, so I I've played a wizard, I've played a rogue, I've played a druid. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to play much else because I've been DMing most of the time afterwards. We'll play one shots every so often, um, but usually they are um like themed to some other universe um because all of my friends are nerds in different fashions like randall's really big on like pokemon and zelda and so he's wanted to do like a zelda one shot for us sometime we've talked about an avatar last airbender one shot um so i haven't had the opportunity to play a ton i think i played a barbarian in one of his one shots and it was really fun to play the stupid brute um, which is a t- stereotypical barbarian. Uh, I like when people go outside of that, yeah. but I had never done it, and so I was like, I'm going to be this stupid brute. Yeah. That's going to be really fun. There, there's uh, a reason why the architects are fun. It's just because they are, mm-hmm. you know? So there's nothing wrong with being vanilla. Oh, yeah. But I, I think I would I think I would pick a wizard um, just because I love the whole... Uh, grasping for arcane and hidden knowledge and just seeking that and and the versatility of spells I love that you can do such crazy things and they have access to all of them so it's like you know that's why I like wizards because I can just play around with anything and everything and do creative things Yeah. but maybe that'll change when I play a few more but yeah. for now I have to say wizards okay okay so uh, why didn't you say bards? Because they're they're my favorite class, <laughs> and I I don't know I I love bards. They are probably for me I I have the most fun playing them because I just love I love singing and dancing and just being so yeah. silly and stupid at the same time. So I think they're underutilized and underrated for that matter. So I, I definitely do love bards. I just uh, I I don't th- I think it's because I've never played one, yeah. and I I would because I'm in the same creative way. When we started this campaign. I was one of those asshole DMs that was like, hey, if you're going to play a bard, I expect there to be some performance. You don't have to sing, but, you know, if you're going to be a bard, pick something. You're going to do poetry, you're going to read limericks, whatever you're going to do, I expect performance because we're going to be podcasting this. So, like, I don't want a boring bard. (laughs) So, um, I would do the same thing. And I think that's probably why I've never played one because I'm so self conscious about, like, I wouldn't know what to pick. Yeah. Um, but Ben inspired me. I, I miss having his bard at the table. He yeah. he did such a great job. I want to make a DeWitt's Greatest Hits at some point and put that onto our YouTube of just all the yeah. songs that he's done throughout the past. Yeah. One day I'll I'll do it. Yeah, that's super <laughs> cool. No, I, yeah, bard, bards are cool. But talking about wizards, I so two years ago, I started, I was a player in a Descent into Avernus campaign. And I was like, I'll play a wizard just because. And I sucked mm-hmm. at it because I, my mind was too focused on like, I was tunnel visioned essentially. I, <laughs> I didn't, I, my mind, well, I didn't have a 3000 IQ brain to play a, a good wizard. But uh, no, and, and, and since then, since being a DM, I, I think being a f- battle master fighter and a wizard are like the two things that any DM would be really good at because they're super tactical, mm-hmm. super good at doing, you know, a lot of crazy stuff. But yeah, I think wizards are really cool. And going beyond the just classic like spellbook, one of my players who's making his character right now, he's actually going to be playing a wizard who is like a jeweler who writes their spells on like stones and, and jewels and stuff. And, See, I love the creativity that yeah. people do. Like. That's so. That's cool. I like that a lot. And and he's gonna be in Order of the Scribes, which came out in Tasha's Cauldron yeah. thing. And yeah. and when you do that, you can um, erase spells, like just with the wave of a hand. And so like yeah, he's. I'm really excited for when he when he plays. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's. it's I like that. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, for sure. Well, so what's your class in real life? What's what's oh, your? I've never <laughs> thought of it. And it can't, be a, it can't be a commoner because that's that's what we all are. Yeah. 
I've heard this question asked to other people before, and I always mean to think about it, and then I stop because I, I'm really bad at, uh, like assuming for myself. I feel like I'd have to have someone else give me the the right answer because I don't know. Um, You're gonna hate my next question then. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I think I would probably be more of a druid. Okay. in real life um you know i i have a a very like spiritual nature connected mindset um and i wouldn't say i'm intelligent enough to be a wizard like if there were any magical abilities that came to me it would be like inert natural abilities who wouldn't be studying because i'm really really bad at school yeah. uh, but uh i like I, I, I would say possibly a bard because of just, you know, storytelling, things like that I could do. But I think Drew would probably be the most accurate that I could say of myself at the moment. Gotcha. Nice, nice. So uh, what is your, your real life, uh, your highest stat in real life? Oh, God. What is your highest ability score in real life? Uh, charisma. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. I'll go with charisma. Sure. Nice, nice. I don't have very good dexterity. I'm not, not super intelligent. Maybe wisdom. Okay. I'd say between wisdom and charisma. Not constitution. <laughs> I've got a I've got the back of a ninety year old, so <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, know, you gotta have wisdom if you're gonna if you're gonna be a druid, you know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what's your real life dump stat? Constitution. <laughs> constitution. <laughs> uh, I'll just I'll just throw, sure. throw a dagger at you and you'll just fall over yeah it could happen <laughs> just like if the breeze blew too quickly my back could yeah yeah snap, it'd be fine. yeah yeah for sure for sure <laughs> uh, okay i okay what is the dumbest slash most useless spell you could come up with right now uh a spell that could summon wizard or summon lizards to you but it, they would take real time to get to you <laughs> Yeah, that was quick, and I I'm very impressed. You, I thought about this. You, you, <laughs> okay, okay. You you could <laughs> you, you, you do the spell a week later, tons of yeah. lizards just come in. Exactly, it's like hundreds of lizards <laughs> around you. But the battle's over. Everything that they could have been used for is pointless now. Yeah, yeah. and then they just attack you, and, and uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's I I did not expect that quick of an answer. <laughs> But uh, I'm I'm really glad that you had that just just right. Now there. you know how my mind works. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's yeah. Okay, what's the most useful spell you can come up with right now? Uh, well, I mean, I feel like all the useful ones are already made, but I I, I feel like teleportation is the most useful spell that could be used right now because you could get anywhere yeah. instantly yeah. that you need to go. Yeah. Even just being able to do it once a day is really powerful. Or even like transmutation spells that could turn things in. You know, if I could turn anything on my desk into money, be great. You know, yeah, yeah. I need that right now. <laughs> we all. I guess, yeah. I, I guess that that leads into my next question. What is one thing from D and D that you could bring into the world? Not money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, maybe because like I feel like player characters get so much more money than they should. If D, if like a D and D world was real, yeah. the amount of gold that characters get is ridiculous. That's not. That's so unrealistic. That's not how it works. But you know, they've got to buy their five thousand well, dollar magic I mean, items that they use once. It's, it's just yeah. because nobody else wants to do the jobs that they give them, and so yeah. like they'll die. We'll just give them. We'll just promise them tons of yeah. money. Five thousand gold, you'll be dead. Oh, you're alive. Shit. Uh, I've got this uh, pencil. Um, I think magic. Okay. Um, is there a, spe I, is a specific like a spell or something? I, not spell. I, I I'm a firm believer believer that there's um there's more to this world than no, but it's not. I you know I I think that magic would just. It would be the icing on the cake. It would really just in general, you know, and it could be bad. It could be like D and D worlds. It could just, you know, make evil super villains and make things worse than they are now. We already have enough super villains in the world, but uh, if they had magic, it could be worse, but then we'd have people who are using it the right way. So, you know, I don't know, exactly. but that's, that's what I would call. 
having having a little bit more open magical nature than this hidden world that we don't necessarily have access to or know a lot about but yeah yeah that's cool that's cool i guess what is the most insane thing that your players have done <laughs> or, or, or are there too many things to actually like narrow it down no they're they're pretty they're pretty level-headed um i think that they care about their characters too much to do anything completely stupid um but the heist that they tried to pull is probably the dumbest yeah. because there was like they spent a a pretty good amount of time planning but their planning really was i mean it was literally the them having to learn the lesson of not splitting the party yeah. because their whole plan was like okay two of you are gonna go break in while the rest of us hang out because we could cause issues but two of you will be able to break into this heavily fortified keep that is guarded by creatures that we don't even know what they are and why that'll be fine why, everything will go great why wouldn't that work right exactly and then uh that split them even more because one of them went to go look for them after the fact and then she got found and luckily she made it back to the rest of the party before things got crazy but like that was that was probably the dumbest thing they did it ended up with all of them eventually being taken down to the underdark um because they just yeah uh i i don't i don't think they've done anything completely stupid other than maybe walking into the arc that they're in now knowing full well that they were facing up against two demigods that involve or embodied the uh physical form of greed on the material plane but that's fine yeah, it's, it's fine it's whatever it'll end fine it'll end good for them <laughs> it's I, I love that meme where it's like session session <laughs> one hey can you save my cat session 40 we kill the god like yeah it's it's it's, it's so true like yeah when you, Pretty much. When you think about the progression from a level one character to a level like even just level five character with mm. fireball and stuff, it's it's a little a little insane. Just a little bit. Yeah. What's your favorite color? I'm sorry, it's not a D and D question. Oh, that's okay. I, I, like blue is very general. Uh, I would say more like like a cyan, like minty blue almost. Nice, nice. Yeah. It's a good color. I can tell you like blue. You're yeah. wearing some blue right now. Yeah, got my bow tie but, and blue green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bow ties are cool. Bow ties are cool. But hey, at, hey. Least, at, least, at least you have a a specific shade. That's that's mm -hmm. how you know people are serious about their colors, is if they're like Oh yeah. They're serious. They 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 can say cyan. Which I I just Yeah, red, I guess. Yeah, red, red. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite food? Sushi. Dude, I, I love sushi. I love sushi. I miss sushi, you know, with the, all this going on. It, we've talked about, we've gotten, we've ordered sushi once. Mm -hmm. um, and Randall, one of the other players, because I, I live with two of the, the players at the table right now. We have our studio is set up in our kitchen of all places, yeah, I, <laughs> or our dining room. Yeah. But uh, he went and picked up sushi once for us because we, we have that whole, like, I wouldn't really order raw fish from a delivery service because we all know that DoorDash, like I have a lot of friends who drive that and mm -hmm. I know that they have the incentives to, they need to do as many orders as possible at one time. And so they don't always come to you first. Mm -hmm. So I don't want raw fish sitting in that car for as long as it could. Yeah. Um, so I've only had it once in the past year and I miss going to sushi restaurants so badly. Dude. All uh, you can eat sushi is one of my favorite things. Yes. Oh man, I miss it. It's it's so good. One day, one day soon, yeah. I'll be able to stuff my face with raw fish and rice again. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, Asian food is. I I've always I've always loved it so much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you there. Yeah. Well, Mason, is there any other questions or anything you want to talk about? Well, I want to know when you're going to stream your campaign oh, because geez. I want to see this wizard that's playing uh, the, with the stones and the spells on the stones. That's what I want to know. So we're actually, I don't have enough podcasts and live streams that I watch. No, I need no. more. Well, we're starting that. I do. I, I listen to stuff all day at work. <laughs> I need more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Like I've, I've listened. So since I started driving, I've listened to 
all of campaign one and campaign two and a bunch of other wow. just stuff and i've start, i started back in october because i listen to them on, yeah. on 1.75 speed and so i okay. i go through them like like crazy I don't know how I have so many friends who do that. How do you do that? I have to listen to it in normal. That's just, it's in, insanity. It's like to it's, me, I can't, yeah. it's too fast. I, I, I really think the skill because yeah. oh, I, I, had to, I had to start on like 1.25 and then, and it, it just got to the point where I, there were so many things. I think there was just one day when I was just at my computer and I was like, I have 10 tabs open of videos I got to watch or that I want to watch. <laughs> How how am I gonna get through all this before bed? And it was like two a.m. or something. And, and so I was like, okay, I'm just gonna crank up the speed. And ever since then, my my, my whole life has changed. Hmm. I could try learning, but I don't know if I could do it. Yeah. I couldn't. You, you really have to get an ear <laughs> for listening to, to all the all the people talk fast. Fair. Yeah. I see that. But, uh, so when are you streaming? Um, I don't know. I'm streaming. <laughs> Um, I don't make have, it a podcast. I know, I know. I don't have super good setups, but I'm. We're starting that. Well, we've been doing that campaign, but two of my players just never showed up because when it's online, people just yeah, it's just, hard. Yeah, it's a little harder. But one of the guys is still sticking around. He introduced me to his friend who is doing is playing the wizard. Um, and so we're starting next Sunday. So we'll see what happens. Fair. I mean, if if it happens, let me know. Yeah. I'm curious. Oh, I will. No, and I'll, I'll give you updates. Deal. I'll give Deal. You updates. I want them. <laughs> no, I, I'm, and he he's also a dungeon master, and he he's a forever DM. So we we started talking last night, and today he's already given me so much stuff. And nice. I'm, just, I'm super excited. Yeah. That's always fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's great. I love I love storytelling. It's it's my favorite thing ever such a wonderful skill and thing to share with other people so it always it always warms my soul to be able to speak with other people like yourself who and have that passion for it so i mean really thank you for letting me come and talk to you about this stuff i mean i know that it was a lot of me talking but i still learned a lot about you and i like that i like people so <laughs> and i i appreciate you you're my you're my first one i'm interviewing and so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm starting this series just because yeah, this exact same thing. I I love getting to know people and the D&D community is so supportive and nice. I would say probably 90% is amazing. And then there's that 10% oh, yeah. of that, you know, the the horrible yeah. horror stories. But I, yeah. I've been very lucky with my friends and my players. So, yeah. But very nice. Thank you so much, Mason. It is It has been yeah. a blast. It has been a pleasure and uh Same. yeah awesome thank you have a good night dude yeah you too man thank you yeah.